Hello my beautiful friends, it's me Stormy Grace and we're going to talk in this video about the full moon coming up on Sunday, August 26th at 3 degrees of Pisces. And man, this is some beautiful astrology we're about to see. We're going to talk about a couple different configurations that are set up in here. We've got not only the sun and moon opposite each other, so that's one aspect configuration we've got going on. We've got a kite, we've got a grand trine, we've got a minor trine. We're going to look at this stuff and I'm so excited because there's so much to talk about in this moon and I'm also going to keep this video not entirely long because I want you to be able to enjoy the information not just have to like kind of drown it out because you're lost in all of it okay but when I'm looking at this as a whole you guys the full moon happening in Pisces first and foremost when we have a full moon this is telling us it's culmination time right something needs to be ended acknowledged or adjusted but because the sun and the moon are are in opposition to each other. Our opposing forces are lit up in us, right? Our wants versus our needs. Um, you know, the calm versus the crisis, right? <laughs> So we've still got a fair amount of that happening at this full moon, but being in the sign of Pisces and with these other configurations around it, one of the most beautiful things I think is happening at this moon is that it's actually kind of a healing salve to go on all of this retrograde work we've been doing. Pisces is an energy of, of endings, of closure, of transition, and have we not been transitioning? I mean, tell me down below if you've been going through zero transition, I need to know how you did that. <laughs> but I think we've been going through a lot of shift and transition. We've been ending kind of one phase of our development in our lives as we've known it and getting ready to move um, into something else. And at a full moon, your ability to use that increased emotional intuition is very, very high. Um, and with this particular moon, there are tons of opportunities available here for not only personal growth, but there's a lot of professional growth, I think, that's on the table as well. Now, one thing I do want you to keep in mind, remember the moon works in cycles, right? So any full moon that we're looking at is going to have some kind of tie or connection to the previous moon, which was a new moon. And in this particular one was the solar eclipse. So we want to know on August 11th, that solar eclipse, what was happening for you because now, or what were you manifesting? Because now some of those goals, you'll be able to either see where they needed to be adjusted and get ready to move them forward, or you'll start to see, I think, a different level of emotional connection to these things that you're trying to do because here's the thing sometimes we want something we want to manifest it but we're too attached so we don't actually give the universe the opportunity to deliver because we're still you know got our hands around it so either way the full moon is going to have an effect this particular full moon is going to have an effect for about two weeks so when we get to the september 9th new moon we're going to want to look at what's been happening in this cycle with the moon you guys we always follow the cycle okay all right, let's jump in and talk about what we're looking at here. Isn't this fabulous? Look at this design. Look at this beautiful configuration. We've got this grand trine, a little minor trine happening here. We've got the kite. We've got this opposition running through the middle. So good. So first and foremost, let's talk about the grand trine because it is huge and beautiful. So now this grand trine that's happening, we've got the sun, Saturn, Uranus, and then a connection between Saturn and Uranus. So we've got, do you see the connections that are happening right up here? So first of all, we've got the sun in a trine to Saturn, which is phenomenal. I love this energy because whenever this is happening, something we've been working on or something we've been pushing towards, we're gonna be able to start to, one, focus better on it, and two, start to see some kind of some rewards from it a little bit. You know what I mean? Now here's the other thing that's kind of interesting. Whenever the sun comes into a trine with Saturn, for me, I start to get people who kind of come out of nowhere and they just have information for me. They're kind of guiding me. They're sharing something with me. They almost enter my world kind of like a mentor and or I find that happening to myself, which is phenomenal, whether we're talking about professional or personal growth. So I think this is a beautiful energy happening here. Now, the other thing that I'm looking at in terms of this grand trine is that we've also got the sun in a trine to Uranus, which is great. This is flashes of inspiration, doing something different, um, doing it differently than you've ever done it. And because the sun is involved with this one, it also means you may learn something about yourself that you didn't even know. This could be something completely out of the norm. You have this great discovery about yourself. So here we go. We have this, this mentor energy that could be running through. And then we've got this, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do 
do that. You know, <laughs> so see what I mean? Whether it's personal or professional, we, so, we see this coming around. I wonder if for some of us too, during this grand trying energy, if you don't figure out you really can be a leader in whatever it is you've been trying to do, okay? Now, the last part of this is having Saturn in a trine to Uranus. Now, this is again to me, um, energy that takes us from one place to another. It takes us from really from bridge to, to shore, okay? Because Saturn is in a trine to Uranus. Saturn wants to create these boundaries. Uranus wants to knock them down, right? But in a trine, they're trying to play nicely with each other. So if you have changes you want to make in your career, in your life, this is a time to do it because they're actually working together. Saturn's like, you know what, Uranus, you're not that bad. Okay, let's create a little something over here. So if you are looking to make those changes, you could also have changes just handed to you. Maybe it's time for you to move up at work. You didn't necessarily see the promotion coming, but now you have all this extra responsibility. Um, because Uranus is involved as well, I do consider that maybe you're getting a bump in your technical skills or your technology is changing. This could also be a change in your friendship group. Maybe you're learning or leading or teaching or connecting in a different way. But whatever it is, the grand and trying configuration is a big old invitation to take opportunity and move it forward because the grand trine aspect says you have natural talent here you have natural energy natural opportunity here we just need you to take action on it because a trine even though it's delicious so delicious if you don't take action you can waste it because the other bad side to or the downside I would say of a trine is you can be so comfortable in the natural energy that you don't take action and so then you are passive on it so at this full moon let this energy guide you right like let it move you forward take action where do you see this happening in your particular chart because that's where you're going to want to move and take action okay now let's talk about this little minor trine that we've got going over here and this one is actually formed between the moon uranus and saturn up here okay and it's called the minor trine because it's tiny, right? But when you have a minor trine, the things that I think about because it's got sextile energy is that, again, this is an energy of natural talent, natural skill. But with sextile energy, whenever the planets have sex, that's good for us. It means not only do you have natural talent and opportunity here, but you will intelligently take action on it. You will do something with it, right? Like you know you will naturally walk or move towards it, okay? Now, with the moon in a sextile here to Uranus, um, this is exciting. This is excitement to your emotions. This is giving you a place where I would tell you, trust your gut, trust your intuition, trust what's coming up for you. Ask a lot of dang questions. If you have questions, if you don't have the information you need, ask those questions because your inner guidance is actually trying to work with you and help you. Now with the moon in a sextile to Saturn, this is a commitment energy right? This is an energy that makes you solid. Your emotions get a little bit grounded. And so the things you're trying to move forward into, you really, I think, feel like you have the grounding to be able to do them. This is just a really nice addition to this kite energy that we've got going on. Because when we're looking at this big old opposition we've got going on in this kite energy, um, the energies around it on these blue lines that you see here actually support give this a little bit of help right because sometimes when we're looking at kite energy um in my experience it can be a little bit tense right in my in my experience especially with this opposition running here opposition has my two sides going right my needs versus my want and i don't necessarily feel solid about that i don't necessarily feel solid as to where i'm gonna put my energies or where i'm going to put my commitment at but i think that these other blue lines and the trines around it help you feel more connected with what the actions need to be moving forward which is phenomenal you've been in this retrograde time you've been gathering information information's been coming to you now i think as we're getting ready to leave this retrograde energy you're feeling like okay 
here's where I can and where I need to move. Now, some of this stuff too, let's keep in mind, because this opposition is here, this can be personal conflict, inner pain, inner turmoil, things that you've been shocked or that have just been really uncomfortable to outgrow. But now I think you see a little bit of freedom on the other side. So I absolutely love this energy because this is moon energy as well. I just want to throw this in there. There could be connections to family members for you because in kite energy it, there's usually some kind of connection to what makes you feel grounded tethered secure emotionally balanced something like that so you could be having some experiences around your family members as well just depending on you know where this is falling exactly in in your particular charts so i think that the spiritual influence that comes with this moon is phenomenal it's just that nice cooling salve at the end of a heavy retrograde energy heavy eclipse season where we feel a lot more able to be successful right there's harmony that's actually involved with this full moon but nonetheless this particular full moon you guys is saying something needs to end you need to acknowledge something and you need to make your adjustments because it is time to make these creative transitions to something else but the opportunities for success with these trines is very much so in your favor you guys Okay, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I do still have some spaces in the 101 and 102 classes. If you're wanting to sign up for that discounted class that's happening September to November, you can go ahead and sign up for, with, for that for $75. It's all in the description box down below. Or if you need help navigating what happens after eclipse season, come and see me. Let's sit down. Let's look through your chart. If you're not sure what this information means for you, let's look over it together, okay? Information is power. That's for for sure. All right, you guys, I love you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.